a lot of people watching this video will probably know that I picked Lomachenko to win this one. Going in, I said that all of my boxing intellect, everything that I see in going into this fight tells me that Devin Henning's supposed to win it. Younger guy, taller guy, longer reach, phenomenal jab, great conditioning. He's just got the momentum and you know what we had seen from Lovell in like the last three to four fights, it just wasn't great. And I didn't think that it was going to be at a level that was going to be able to get it done against Devin Haney. Now, that being said, I imagine a lot of people are going to expect me to say that that was an absolute robbery. Loma should have came away with it. Loma should have got that victory. He did enough to go in there and come out with the W. But just by definition, I don't even think it can be a robbery, right? A lot of people throw that term around, but I mean, let's break it down for one second. And let me say this. If you've got a fight that's extremely close, if you've got a fight that it's debatable, that it can go either way, it can't be a robbery. A robbery is when something is clear cut without doubt, supposed to go one way and it goes another. And I don't think that that's what this fight was. Look, at the end of the day, I think that you absolutely can't give Devin Haney any less than five rounds. Even if you if you give him four of the first six and the 12th, that's five rounds right there. I think it's almost impossible to make an argument that he gets less than five rounds, which means you give Loma seven. That means one round being different. If you make one round different, it becomes a draw. That's it, just one round. So if you're only talking about one round, how are we going to be talking about a robbery? Okay, so even if you want to give Loma this fight, I don't think you can call it a robbery. That being said... I think it's very easy to go with giving it 115, 113, either way, or even a draw. I mean, man, some of those rounds were so close. But like I said, going with four of the first six and the 12th round to Haney, without question. Going with 10 and 11 to Loma and the third round to Loma. I mean, there's certain rounds in there that you feel like are, are very strong in one way or the other. But there is so many rounds that were so close. And I, I mean... The biggest winner of the fans, what an awesome fight. Both men showed up and brought it. I mean, early on in this fight, to me, early on in this fight, the story of the fight wasn't Devin Haney's jab like I expected it to be. I mean, everybody was talking about this jab going in, myself included. Why it's it's arguably the best jab in boxing. Wasn't even what we saw. Wasn't even what he went to. Didn't even do it. I mentioned that we did not see him dominate with the jab in the fight with Joe Diaz. We did not see him dominate with the jab in the fight tonight. Instead, we saw him dominate with the right hand, particularly the right hand to the body. Man, I loved the body work that Devin Haney was going in there and doing with that right hand. He was landing it early, often, clear, just beautiful, hard shots. You know that they were affecting Loma. I mean, dude, that's what that's what was dominating the action. That's what, when, when he's winning four of these first six rounds or whatever it is you give him, but everybody is unequivocally saying that he's dominating the early rounds of this fight early part of the fight or the early half of the fight he was doing it with the right hand and he really he was doing it with the right hand of the body like he was landing some good left hooks he was he, he was landing jabs here and there but ultimately it was that right hand that was getting things done and as i predicted it was really the man who was going forward the most who was who was winning the action right the guy who was pressing the action the guy who was going forward was typically the guy who was able to get the, the best work done other than the fourth round i thought Devin haney was on the back foot and box beautifully in the fourth round to win it um but that really wasn't really wasn't the story now that being said let me say this when we get into the second half of the fight that's when we typically see Loma turn it up and that's what we saw here and he was able to just go in there and he was starting able to set a lot of traps he was starting able to use a lot of feints he was able to get that footwork going with those angles and start landing those shots he wasn't backing up he was cutting the angle and then he was staying in there and landing more shots behind it he was doubling up the left hand he was pressing Haney back he was getting good work done on the inside. All great stuff. And there was a few things that I noticed. Number one, Haney wasn't able to adjust. He was coming out. He was winning early with that right hand of the body. As Loma started to cut an angle, started to, started to cause him to miss that right hand a little more and started to press the action a little more to take the right hand away, right? Because you got Devin Haney who's pressing and landing the right hand and he's also using that right hand to land a few counters. But once Loma started to press the action more himself in the second half of the fight, he was taking that right hand away by doing that. Haney wasn't able to adjust. And then number two, he was getting some, I thought he wasn't getting the best advice from his pops. You know, he's coming back in the corner. 
and his pops is telling him, you need to get underneath the left hand and then your brick is faster, meaning your your right hand is going to be faster than what Lum was coming back with. And, you know, Devin responds with what we all know, which is he's doubling the left hand up. And Bill's telling him it's a one and done. So not the best of advice. Um, didn't really give him an answer to what he was looking for. I felt like Devin was coming back to the corner, you know, when we're looking at that seventh, eighth, ninth round. He was coming back. He was a little bit confused, didn't really have an answer. He was he was hoping that he had something to go off of, and he just wasn't getting that kind of feedback in the corner, man. So who knows what would have happened if he'd have had somebody in there who, who could have offered a different perspective or could have called, you know, offered him a slightly different way to look at it. You know, that being said, he still turned in a phenomenal performance. Um, he, his, his conditioning was good. He started to, you know, he started out and I, I was, he looked gassed at, you know, he looked like he was getting fatigued. He looked, you know, towards the end of the fight again, he looked like he was getting a little bit fatigued, but you know, I wonder if that was more mental wear and tear and the fact that he didn't really have some answers and he was a little bit confused as to what was going on and he wasn't sure how he was going to make it through more than anything else because, you know, I gave him the 12th round. Like physically, I, he looked 100% on point. Um, I expected him to, to be able to get things done and he did. Mentally, you know, Vasily Lomachenko brings the heat, man. I mean, dude is something else. He's He's got this high ring IQ and he was constantly, constantly making you stay on point because of everything he brings to the table. All of the different footwork and the angles and the way that he's mixing the shots up and, and the different combinations that he's throwing. He had Haney hurting there late in that fight. You know, when there was about two minutes left in the 11th round, man, he just absolutely turned around and cranked it up. So great, great work by both men. Um, and who knows what's next, right? Who knows what's next? I mean, we saw, we saw Shakur Stevenson hop in the ring afterwards. Um, I imagine a lot of people are going to want to get it, Devin. And look, Shakur Stevenson is going to be a whole lot of problems for him because he's not going to have that reach advantage. And that's another southpaw. Gervonta Davis. He would have a reach advantage against Tank, but man, Tank hits like, you know, he hits like something else. And we saw Devin Haney get caught with a lot of left hands. So, you know, is he going to want to stick around for those fights at 135? Is he going to want to make that nasty cut and then also have to deal with those dudes and the heat that they're bringing after that cut? I don't know. You know, he's probably going to look into keeping that record undefeated, vacating the belts and leaving as the last you know, undisputed champion, moving up to 140 pounds, testing the waters there. There's some big fights. We got a fight coming up with Teofimo Lopez versus Josh Taylor in a couple weeks. Uh, we know that Ryan Garcia is up there. There's, there's, you know, we saw Raleigh Romero just win a world title last week. So who knows what, what he could be thinking at this point. Nobody likes making a weight cut. Nobody wants to deal with a nasty weight cut. Nobody wants to deal with a nasty weight cut and then just deal with an absolute beast afterwards. And after coming off of this performance tonight, It'll be interesting to see what his team advises him with and then what he ends up doing. But, you know, I thought he looked good early, but the end of the fight, Loma all day long. Loma all day long. So, you know, I put a poll up already and there was like, by the time I'm making this video, there was maybe eight or nine responses. And overwhelmingly, it was already Lomachenko. You know, we saw Max Kellerman. We saw Joe Tessa Couture. A lot of these guys were giving the fight to Lomachenko. And again, I can understand a 115 113 car now there's people talking about 116 112 loma there's people talking about 116 112 haney i think we're starting to reach when we get into those type of numbers you know as good as both men looked when you score this on a round by round basis there were so many around of these rounds that were close i mean there, there, there's there's so many exchanges in there where we see loma come in with a straight left and just as he's landing and he's snapping the head back at haney we see haney also catching him with a counter right, catching him with a counter left hook. There was there was so much going on. So I, I think, you know, to think that either man just walked away with this convincingly or they were dominant or they won this eight rounds to four or something along those lines, you know, I'm not in that camp. That's not the way I see it. So a lot of arguments to be made. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think is going to be next for each man? You know, I, it seems like we aren't going to get a rematch in here, which was what a lot of people would probably initially want coming off a performance like this. You know, that being said, let's assume that we don't get a rematch. What do you think is going to be next for each man? How do you think it's going to turn out? And what did you think of this one? Let me know what you guys think.